if you want to connect to remote networks securely by using a VPN site to site on Palo Alto firewalls, but you don't know how to do it, I got you covered. In this video, I'll walk you through the step-by-step -step process on how to configure a site to site VPN between two Palo Alto firewalls. If you're new on Palo Alto firewalls, don't worry, it's going to be an easy to follow process. And if you want to learn how to get started with the Palo Alto firewalls, you might want to watch this video that I recorded some time ago that will help you get started with basic things like configuring the interface, configuring the host name, uh, configuring state routes, just the basic stuff. But if it's not a problem for you, let's get started. Okay, this is the topology we'll be using. And if you want to use it, you can get it for free on my platform. So just go to celesiocarvalho.com on free resources and you should be able to get it and import into Pnet Lab or even G. Okay, so in this topology, we have two sites. We have Lisbon site and we have Porto site. The main goal is that we want these two clients, Linux 5 and Linux 6, to communicate securely through these two firewalls. So we have firewall 1 here, PAFW1, and we have this PAFW3. So we have here this router, so it's like the internet router, and we want to establish a secure tunnel. So it's going to look something like this between these two firewalls. But don't worry with this firewall too, we're not going to use it. This was just for a previous lab and we're just going to focus on these two firewalls, okay? Now, I have already started with configuration like uh, assigning the IP address and the host name and state route towards the router ISP. So we're not going to see how to do it in this video. We're just going to focus on how to create the site-to-site -site VPN so that these two machines are able to communicate securely through the VPN tunnel. Okay, we'll begin by configuring the firewall one and I'll be using this step-by-step -step guide as a reference to what are the steps required, okay? So the first thing is to create the tunnel interface and we should go to network interface and create a new tunnel interface so let's go to so this is firewall one that's 4331 and should go to interfaces tunnel and here we want to add a new tunnel interface and I'm just going to use tunnel one and the virtual router we're going to use the default one and security zone we're going to create a new security zone and let's call this as VPN zone. Let's copy that and OK. And we're going to save this. Now, the next step should be to configure the Ike crypto profile. That should be the Ike phase one. Now, if you're familiar with site to site uh, technology VPN, uh, you know that we need two phases to establish a site-to-site -site VPN. So we have um, phase one and we have phase two. So the phase one, this is where the firewalls, let's call it. So we have the firewalls, they will first uh authenticate themselves just to validate are you firewall one are you firewall two that's what we're going to use phase one for now phase two is what is going to actually let me change the color so the phase two so that should be like the pc okay so phase two will be used to actually build the tunnel that is going to protect the traffic between these two PCs, okay? So we have to start always with phase one. Okay, so go to network, network profiles, Ike crypto. So should go to network, Ike profile, Ike crypto. We're going to add a new one. Okay, so we have to provide the name. Now for the DL man group i'm going to use group two as for encryption i'll be using das just uh not very secure encryption but this is just a lab 
and for authentication be using SHA-1 and here the time will be using 2800 okay and we're going to save this now go back to the next step so we did the crypto profile so now we're going to configure the gateway and the gateway should go to network network profiles ike gateway so it is here actually that's not that's here ike gateways and we're going to add a new gateway so we're going to provide the name to this gateway so i'm just going to copy here the name and the interface that's going to be the outside interface and if you look at my topology that's interface one slash three so we're going to select the interface one slash three and the local ip address is going to be the ip address on that interface now the peer ip address that's going to be pyro 2 outside or internet or when ip address in this case it's 1682254 okay so i'm just going to copy this here now then we have to type the pre-share key and this pre-share key has to match between both firewalls so just take note of that and that should be enough so let's double confirm here we don't have to change anything there okay so we did the ike gateway and you can see here i did some screenshots before so then we have the ipsec crypto profile and that's going to be the phase two okay so i'm just going to grab the name here copy and let's go to ike ipsec crypto profile and we're going to add a new one and here i'm going to provide the name it's for encryption again i'm going to use this uh for group diff hammer i'm going to use five and for authentication i'm going to use sha one and the lifetime i'm going to use uh, seconds 28 800 okay and i'm going to save this if we go back to my step-by-step -step guide then we have to create the ipsec tunnel that's where we're going to combine all of these uh components we have done so far so on ipsec tunnels uh we're going to combine the gateway and the ipsec crypto profiles i'm just going to grab the name i don't have to type this again so let's go to crypto ipsec tunnel and here we want to add a new one let's provide a name now the tunnel interface is going to be the tunnel interface we created before now the Ike gateway, just going to select the Ike gateway just created and the IPC crypto profile, that's going to be the phase two we just created. And next we're going to prox ID. Now prox IDs, that's going to refer to the networks that we want to use the tunnel. And in this case, we have the 10100 that's on Lisbon side and we have the 10200 on Porto side. So, 10100 that should be the local site because we are configuring firewall one and 10200 that's going to be the remote network okay so we're going to add i'm just going to provide a name for this okay and i'm going to paste now the local subnet is going to be uh, 10100 and the remote is going to be 10200 okay I'm so going to press OK and save this. Now, with that done, the next step should be to add the state route. So now we have to say to this firewall how to reach the remote subnet. So we have to do it on the virtual routers. So let's go to virtual routers. I'm just going to use the default one. And here on state routes, we're going to add a new state route. So we're going to provide the name for this so that's going to be remote lan portal and the destination that's going to be the 10 to uh, 0, 0. and the interface to be used that should be the tunnel interface and we don't need netshop ip address okay so that should be enough we're going to save this so next we have to allow traffic to flow between these two 
uh, zones or between these two networks on the policies. So now we go to the step-by-step -step process. So we have to add one policy that will allow this communication. Okay, so let's go to policies. And here on policy, we want to add a new policy. So it's taking some time to load the default ones. So it's going to give it a name. Okay, so it's going to be permit VPN LAN to portal. So the source, but so we have to allow traffic coming from the inside zone. And then that is going to the VPN zone. Okay, so this is going to be in this direction. So from the inside zone to the VPN zone. So now we have to also allow traffic that will come from the VPN zone to the inside zone. And we can do it in the same uh, policy. So we're going to add another one. So we're going to allow coming traffic coming from VPN zone and going to the inside zone. I'm just going to leave everything as default, except we want to enable logs in case this doesn't work. So we're going to save this. And that should be enough. Now we're going to commit or apply those changes on firewall one. Now we have to do the same thing, but in the, ver in the reverse order on firewall two. Okay, so let's go on network and we have to start with the tunnel interface. I'm going to add a new tunnel, it should be tunnel one and the virtual router is going to be default. The security zone, that's going to be a new one. So that should be a VPN zone. We're going to save this. And now we're going to also save this. So we created the tunnel interface and so now let's go to Ike Crypto. So that's going to be a uh, phase one. I'm just going to grab the name. We're going to add this. And we have to match the same uh, settings that we did on Firewall 1. So for Diffie Hellman, we use Group 2. Encryption, we use DES. Authentication, we use SHA-1. And Kill Lifetime, we use Seconds 2800. And we're going to save this. Okay, so if we go back to the step by step, so that should be port side. So create a tunnel interface, create the Ike crypto profile, and then we have to create the Ike gateway. So this is the step we are now. So let me just get the name. So, so let's create the gateway and we're going to add. It's going to be the name and the interface. That's going to be also the one three interface. Let's go back to portal. And here I'm going to select the one three and the local IP address is going to be one one six eight two two five four. Now the peer IP address that's going to be firewall one IP address and that's going to be in this subnet twenty three one two two five four. Okay, so I have this already here. So I'm just going to copy and paste and now I'm going to also uh, copy the pre shared key that has to match like we did on the firewall one. Okay, so that should be enough and it's complaining for some reason. Okay, I'm just going to 23, one, two, two, five, four. Okay, and we're going to save this. Okay, so now let's go to phase two. So IPsec crypto, we're going to add a new one. So let me just get the name for this. So that should be phase two and encryption. We use this uh, group. We use group five and uh, lifetimes is 28 800 and authentication. We're going to use SHA one as well. So we're going to save that. Okay, so this is done. So now we should be able to create. Let's go the uh ipsec tunnel so no, yes that should be the ipsec tunnel so let me just get the name here we go to ipsec tunnel we're going to add a new ipsec tunnel give it a name and we want to use the tunnel interface and the ike gateway is created 
and the IPsec crypto profile is going to be the one we just created. As for prox IDs, now we have to do the same thing. So prox ID, that's going to be um, the one from the local will be 10.2.0.0 and the remote is going to be 10.1.0.0 because we are configuring now firewall 3. Okay, so let's get the name here. Okay, and I'm going to paste protected networks. So local that should be 10 to 0 and the remote that's going to be uh 10 1 0 okay now we're going to save this next is the static route so we're going to uh, virtual routers and here on default static route so we want to add a new static route and that's going to be route to lisbon and the destination is going to be the 10100 let me just grab and we'll be using the tunnel interface and the next hop we're just going to use set to none okay and let's save this change so we have state route so now we have to create the policy that will allow this traffic from porto to lisbon so we're going to add a new policy primitive vpn LAN to lisbon source just like we did on portal we have to allow uh in both directions so from inside and from vpn zone and the destination to vpn zone and to and uh to inside okay just want to enable logs in case these start to fail and now we want to commit these changes so i'm going to commit yeah we didn't press enough okay so now let's commit and wait so meanwhile let's go back to firewall one and we can see that the changes were committed successfully okay so now let's give it a minute to finish uh, committing these changes on firewall two okay the changes were applied so now let's see if it's really working so let's cancel this and we can validate whether it's working or not if we go to network and if we go to ipsec tunnels and we should see the tunnel status and right now it shows as red so it's red because probably there is not interesting traffic which essentially means that there is no traffic passing through the tunnel to enable the tunnel so let's send some things or try to uh, send some traffic between these two machines so let me i have a oh, session already ended okay so let's see can i ping so this is linux 6 it has the IP 10201, so now I should be able to reach 10101. Okay, and I can reach 10101. So if we go to firewall and I click this again, we should see that the tunnel should turn to green. Okay, and we can also confirm this on the other side. So if we go to network ipsec tunnel you should see that it's going to turn to green as well okay and we can also confirm that by looking at the logs so if we go to monitor traffic we should see traffic coming from the vpn zone to the inside uh source from 10 to 01 so that's linux machine number six uh linux six and going to 10101 and that's ping and we are allowing and it's hitting the rule we just created so, and that's how you deploy a site-to-site -site vpn between two palo alto firewalls if you took value from this video don't forget to subscribe hit the like button and i'll see you in the next one